Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Woolly Mike, but together we are Modeling, Modeling for, for Advantage. Advantage. Star Trek. Woolly, it is Star Trek. So, um, in the summer, we went up to Nottingham. We met the great man Peter Siminovich. Yep. And other guys at uh, Battlefront, Gale Force 9, gave us a few demo games. One was the Aliens one. The other is we came away with this. Yeah, Star Trek Away Missions. So what we're going to do with this video is we've, we've played a few games of this now. It's going to show you the contents, you know, the components and things like that. But then mostly we're going to talk a little bit about the game. And then at the very end, we'll just briefly mention the expansions that came out on release. There's a Klingon one, there's a Romulan one, and we'll cover those. Uh, so what do they get in the box, Mike? So in the box... Does it say? It does. One rule book. That sounds good. Ten miniatures. Nice. Five double-sided mission boards. Mm. Twelve dice. One dice board, 10 character cards, 140 mission and support cards. That's a lot of cards. Two core mission cards, 89 tokens, 50 health pegs, five Borg drone overlays, and two reference cards. So there you go. So this is the starter set, the Battle of um, Star Trek Away Missions, Battle of Wolf 359. Let's have a look at the components then, Mike. Okay. So it's nice the way that they've done the box list yep. so you can see the miniatures. So you get the two teams in the top. You get a Federation team under Riker. Yep. And you get a Borg team under Locutus of Borg. Yep. Um, now, this it's worth saying something about these miniatures, isn't it, Mike? They're interesting. They've, they've gone for a stylistic thing. Now, we did actually get to talk to Peter about this yep. while we were at them. They have bubble heads. <laughs> they have massive heads. Um, and that's a, that's a stylistic choice. When we were talking to Peter, he said, you know, we, they make one one hundredth tanks that are pretty good fidelity. You know, we can make realistic miniatures. The thing is, we made realistic miniatures of these in the early mock-ups, and you just couldn't tell the characters apart. Yeah. They all looked too similar at this scale, and so they'd gone through a few iterations, and they, and then were kind of inspired a bit by the chibi manga style, which is like a big head manga. Um, but the, the, it does hold the personality of the, of, of the characters on the faces. I would say on the subject of the miniatures... In the monotone plastic, the two different teams are in the two different colours. But in that monotone plastic, they, the Borg are very difficult to sell apart. They are. The, um, and they do have their names etched on the bottom. And I think it makes a huge difference to paint these and just you make sure that that name was visible. And they all have the same stat line as well. Which makes them, yeah. <laughs> which makes them they're, apart from Locutus, they're really kind of indistinguishable, and and you need to know which is which when you're kind of pl plotting the game. Yeah, so they're just numbered one to one of five to five of five. Absolutely. E even when we were playing it, I kept mistaking the data card with Worf's card because the faces are just. Yeah, although I think that's you because yeah. I think these miniatures are the one is a Worf carrying a giant, but at least yeah. Worf's got a really noticeable weapon. Yeah. Whereas data is all in the track order. So. Nice visible card. So, protector. We have played this, so a lot of the tokens have been punched. Some of them we kind of pushed back in. Yeah. But it's it's good quality tokens. It's very good. Very good. Yeah, they pop back in nicely as well, a lot of them. we played the game three times now. Yeah. Definitely do not need more tokens than we'll provide. There's more tokens than you need, so far as we can tell. Yep. Turbo lift tubes and there's a nice long corridor as part of the modular system. And then the main boards. So this is the bridge. So we've got the command section, some turbo lifts. Key point is the terminals. Yes, the, this game is driven by terminals at locations. Well, the, no, that, that's, that's not necessarily true. And we'll get to that later. But it is very important. And a lot of the yep. scoring is going to be done at certain terminals in certain locations. So... Crew quarters, sick bay, the Borg cube is on the other the side. The Borg cube yeah. is on yeah. the other side, yeah. Um, so basically the, the four board sections have got um, sections of the ship, medical, transport, uh, biology. And the, one, the ones that you would expect, there's, there's the sick bay, there's the science lab, there's the armoury, there's engineering, there's the bridge. Now these are all little rooms within these 
It's only engineering. This whole board is engineering, but this one has got several rooms of different types in it. And again, we're depending on some cards say use a command terminal in the armory or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So quick start guide. It's only four sheets, eight sides. Found it quite useful. Mostly we were able to run off of. There was no problem playing the game from the quick start guide. The problem in learning this game is is n like any game that's card driven is you need to understand the deck that you're playing before you can really play it. Um, and I think that that's one of the, not that you can really play, you can play it, but you're going to spend a lot of time reading those cards and thinking about it. And the game hugely benefited from playing a second time. Yeah. And, and playing the same team. So I had much more of an idea of how it worked. Yeah. But, but yeah, the quick start guide, it was, it was good to go. Yeah. 32 page main rule book. It expands on the base mission. Yeah. Quick reference cards and objective cards, primary objective cards. Yes. Yeah. So that's your kind of first window into how this, the, the different teams play the same game, but play it very differently. This is a game where you win on score, you score from cards. Right at the top level, you get a faction mission card, right? Yeah. And there's, there's two options even with, within that. The different sides of it um, have different ways to score. Yeah, so you can, you can initially you can choose different primary objectives, um, and then an, in, an interesting thing we haven't, we haven't used this is the, the dice board. Yeah. When, when you're comparing results, you can put them down in order. Contested actions are done is a dice matching system. I'll roll a number of dice based upon a number of factors. You'll roll a number of dice based upon a number of factors. But we then pair them up. So if you're not used to that kind of system, they provided this board here where you punch them out. So you just line up the dice in order, highest to lowest, to match them. We've played World of Tanks uh, and the old tanks, which was dice matching yeah. in that way. We played quite a few games with dice matching, so we don't we didn't need to use it. But if you're new to that system, it's it's great that they provided it. It's it. useful, uh, yeah. So. We didn't mention the proprietary dice, I don't think, Mike. No, sorry, yeah, there faction are, there dice. There are United Federation of Planets and Borg proprietary dice in there, yep. which was nice Six to see. of each. And your, your rolling is capped at six. Yeah. No matter what modifiers you've got, you can't roll more than six dice on a, on a test. So, each character, I'll, I'll pass you the four yeah. of the, the Borg. Pass me some of the Borg. So again, this is good quality cardstock, and it's got that um, texture to it. You know that it's not, and not just paper. It's got a there's like a mesh, yeah, in in there. So it's really quite durable. So a key aspect of this game is in in combat, as far as you know. But there may be other ways of doing it. Is you get your abilities shot off you, or you get your characters have a number of pips, and they're the number of dice that they get, and they are uh, denoted. You have a baseline number. And the others are deletable. <laughs> so when you take a point of damage, you choose where you lose it from on that character sheet. So there's a bit of nuance in it. And you use it with these little pegs. I understand what, what they're doing with this. And I do like the mechanic. But I have to say, I found this particularly in the beginning of the game. When you've got to put like 30 of those pegs across all of your different guys. And it means you can't, you can't stack them or anything like that. Yep. Just the way that they've done that, you need, a, you know, a kind of A4 space to lay them out on and not knock it or anything because all of these pins, I mean, they are nicely punched. It, it, it's aesthetically nice. It's just fiddly and time consuming at the and, beginning and they are, in the setup. They're only about eight mil across the, yeah. the, at the points. They are, they are tiny. But the, and you have a lot of them. Yeah. And so, if we take War, for example, he starts off with, his base is two squares per move, mm. but when he's fully healthy, he's got four move. He starts off with three attacks, three defense, and two skill. Mm. Each time he takes a hit, he drops one off. Once you take the last star off, then they're incapacitated. Correct. And, right, so that, that's kind of how the, how the combat works. Um, various tokens in here. We're not going to go into great detail, but the next thing to sort of say is in relation to the cards, the decks. So each team has, each player will have 
ten team. Each player ha draws from two decks. It's uh, it's a, a draw up to five, and this game. Again, if you didn't score a mission in the last turn, it has a fixed number of turns. Three turns. For the for the starter game, but other games may be longer. I think that that's very much the design yeah. system. Um, so, basically, you need to be looking at the, end, at the end of the round like about discarding any cards that you're not expecting to score very early in the next round. And milling the deck is an important thing. In fact, you can discard cards from your hand to re-roll hands of dice yep. as well. Um, so, like a lot of those games, it's a very card-driven games, milling the deck is an important aspect of it. We've not seen anything that allows you to get anything back from discard. So it's possible during the course of the game to run out of cards. There are, um, in because I played Federation and you were Borg, yeah. There are a couple of cards. Is that when you ta when you play the card, if you make a skill test and it's successful, mm. you shuffle it right back in rather than discard. Right. So, right. So there are there are some of those. Yeah. Um, and what I liked about this, which is not, not again not to everyone's taste, is there was a starter deck, which um, so was the Borg. I had assimilation cards for each major tile. And I had, a no I had a number of different ways I could engage with each of the major tiles and score points, small to large. But there's a whole bunch of other cards, there's as many again, because deck building and customising, leveraging it in a certain direction seems to be an important aspect of how you want to play this game. Um, but I love the fact that they don't make you do that from the get-go. You play the, the, the base game... It seemed reasonably balanced. It it did. The, the both, both games were very both games very close. were very close. And yeah. um, when when I played the Federation in the first game, I, I I played the game and tried to play the cards. In the second game, because I knew I needed a guy in engineering and a guy in medical, I then in the first turn I'm moving them there rather than mm. suddenly discovering on a later turn that I need to be. So knowing your deck and what your mission objectives are, yeah, um, it, you know, in the in the second game, I, I, we, it was a five point difference, and that's because I used my very last action of the game to take a shot and did some damage, which scored five points. You got, yeah, you you were rolling <laughs> dice to score five points, which, which was the difference between a draw yeah. and a win. Um, the two forces play really differently, and I think that that's a really strong part. Of, part of the game if there was a thing that disappointed me that disappointed me a lot is there is an assimilation mechanic as you because i was playing the borg which means if i beat up one of the federation guys i can take him on as a drone and it's like if i effectively if i killed him he becomes a drone and if you then kill the drone, he becomes yours again. Yeah. Which is a bit weird, because uh, killing drones is a lot easier than killing those Federation characters. And what you have here is one of these overlays, so they're a much weaker version of themselves. You punch this bit out, and so their face will still be yeah. showing through the gap. Yeah? Does that work? Yeah, there you go. You do that look. The thing is that the Borg are pretty weak at fighting. And I didn't see, in the base deck, there was very little, I could see very little to be gained by investing so many actions because it would take three or four actions to defeat one of these federation characters which is two-thirds of the entire game length of a player we should character. also point out the remember i started with all four characters on the board mm. in turn one there's only two borg on the board yeah. and you get two single bonus actions that you can play how you want mm. second game it was four before mm. uh, sorry round. second round Two of your new um, mm. drones arrived, and then in the third turn, two more drones arrived. So you. So this is about how the teams are different. See, what the Borg are very weak at is moving. They only move two squares yep. for a single action, whereas the Federation move four squares for an action, unless they've had taken some damage. Um, which means the Borg's capability to move around the board is very weak. But the Borg teleport guys in wherever they want during the course of the game. But of course, you've not got all your models at the beginning. They also have a hive mind thing, which means that any model can give its actions to any other model. And you're like, oh, right, okay. So they, they balanced each other quite well in, in, in terms of, I didn't feel that the Borg were too powerful. 
No. The thing I felt with the Borg was, though, that they were not very good at beating the Federation in a, in a fight. You but had four very strong characters, and the Borg have six quite weak characters in terms of fighting. And putting cards in the direction of fighting, I didn't think was likely to pay off. And the other thing we found is when, when we played the demo game at Battlefront, the two teams didn't actually interact with each other. They just went and did their own missions. Yeah. And it's very easy to do that. You, you, you can get in the way of the other person. Yeah. Rather than actually just, all right, I'm going to fight your guy. I had cards that allowed me to fight and gave me bonuses. So there were occasions where I It was a lot easier for you to kill a Borg drone, both because of your base fighting ability and a few cards. So you could, and your ability to move. Yes. You could choose, all right, it might cost Worf his entire turn, but in his entire turn, he could kill a Borg drone. <laughs> and, it, and the way the Borg play is if they've got to spend a... So the Federation tend to be like, I have this card and I'm going to complete it now. Yeah. And it's going to score me a few points. Whereas the Borg can put a card down and then turn after turn after turn, they keep spending more actions to try and assimilate the different rooms on the, on, on the ship or yeah. open up a vortex and things like that. So they were there for time. And you could see that that model is going to be there for a while. And you have shooting attacks as well. So it was much more... The Federation, I think, had much more scope to do that. And I just felt it was a shame that the assimilation didn't pay off. It didn't yeah. look like it was going to pay off, I suppose. But I don't mind one faction being stronger than the other in fighting. It's the fact that th this seems like a kind of a key flavour mechanic. And it is in there. I just It just, just doesn't seem likely to benefit you. Yeah. And um, yeah, so you know, a lot of the cards were is take an action stood in front of a command console, get ten points. Mm. Um, and then I had a few more complicated ones where if I had two people, yeah, in one person's turn, one took an action, and then the other one took a test at the second terminal, and I was getting thirty five, forty points. Yes, yeah, so you were much more had different guys in different locations doing different thing parts of the same time. Was what your big scoring yeah. cards were, weren't they? As the Federation, and again, it, so it was. It, you were trying to do. We were trying to do very different things. I like that. I like that, and it, it felt like it was quite easy. You could make another Borg team that was better at fighting. And it may be, we haven't got down to, because we were determined to play the game so that we felt we understood the basic yeah. game. We haven't yet started with these. And I'm pretty confident what these are going to allow us to do is to, is to go into a certain direct, take the decks in a certain direction. So one of the things that had occurred to me is the board, because I can teleport in, but I can't really move anywhere, is I probably want to ignore one of the major tiles when I'm building my deck. I want to just not have to go on the bridge. Yeah. Or not have to go into engineering. And just take all of those cards out and put other cards in that score. Because I can't really have a presence on all four of the boards. It just doesn't work. Um, but yeah, the fact that they played out so differently, that in replaying it, we got a lot more out of it. I mean, that our, our, it was our third game, and I thought we really knew what we were doing. We, we, yeah, we were... You know? There was lots going on in each turn. Yeah, and we scored more than double the points we'd scored That's in the right, previous yeah. and, and the, the win it was the last dice roll of the game. Yeah. In terms of replayability, I think that there's an amount there. Because we literally just played the same scenario several times. We didn't use the, the, the Borg version of the board. Although I don't know whether it's actually different or whether it just looks cosmetically different. Is it the same? Yeah, the terminals are in the same place. It looks very different, but I don't think it is. Yeah, that's all right. Oh, so we've got a main corridor, crew quarters, sick bay. Yeah, there's this. It's the same. The the layout. Oh, the layout is slightly different. Yeah. Is it? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. The, because that's just... But, yeah, that one's... That one's very different. More. Yeah. But the same terminals are in the same rooms because the car, because these cars rely on you using them. So, so with, the, with the rooms on the sheet we haven't punched out is that there are terminal names. 
So in there are definitely Federation cards that allow you to flip the terminals. Yes. You can change this terminal into that terminal. It might even be a basic rule, like, like a core yeah. rule to transfer the, the use. Uh, um, I'm, I don't propose to look at it now, but that is definitely a, a, a key mechanic is to change a command terminal into a, into an engineering one or what ops or whatever. Yeah, so the, the, the key thing next time we play this is we'll open up the other deck. You put, you've got to choose 20 mission cards. 20 is the number. and of the Exactly 20. And well, I think it might have said no, no more than 20, or it might have said exactly 20. I think it said exactly 20. You wouldn't want to take any less. And then the support cards, which is weapons or other activities. I think you can, think you can have an unlimited number it of It said, yeah, at least 20. But the point about that is you're just diluting the card. Anybody who's played one of these kind of deck builder, you know, uh, assemble your own deck and bring it to the game, because a deck builder is a different type of thing, yeah. different type of game. There's, you don't want to be diluting it. You want to carefully choose the cards you want. And, and the more cards you've got in there, the less chance you've got of the ones that you want to come in out. Um, so you're likely to play it with 20 and 20. Yeah, so uh, like in the last game, in the end, in the end turns, because we knew we weren't getting any more cards. We, we burnt cards on re-rolls. Mm. And when it came to the last couple of characters, we, we've, not, we've not got a points earning card. Yeah. And so some, some people weren't doing points. So yeah. you've, you've got to know... You know. Any of these fixed turn length games has that like the second half of the last round can be really flat. Yeah, because it may it may be you're looking at you can't say well I can run over there and I can hit that or I can do that. I say, do any of these things score points? Because if none of these things score points, then the game effectively has ended here. Yeah, yeah. Which is sometimes a problem with ca with games yeah. that have points like that. Particularly given the fact that the teams we had didn't score anything for just beating up the other guy. You know. Yeah. Well, uh, but that doesn't mean that such decks don't exist or aren't buildable. They're just not in the the stock. You know, I had start a card that um, I didn't quite use, and it's. If, I, if, I, if I'm in a close combat and I don't take damage, I get points. Right. So, you know, yeah. So. And those, ca those cards... Now, if you take a whole bunch of those cards, you're suddenly interested in, in close combat. Yeah. So that was the game. I felt, I felt good about it. The first time we played it, I thought that this was like, a, like Dungeon Quest. It was like two people playing a solo game just on the same board. There just wasn't enough value in the interaction. Second time we played it, liked it a bit more. By the time I played it the third time, I, like, I do like actually like I like yeah. this game, and I really want to be like go away. Now I've now I've played the same force a few times. I'm gonna go away. I'm gonna mess around with that deck, and next time I play, I'm gonna beat you. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, you, similar. Yeah, and obviously then that brings us on to brings us on to what's what's left. So these were are the unreleased expansions. Uh, to so Chancellor Gowron. Uh, and you get uh, Empress Sailor. Now, yeah. can I just say for you Star Trek fans out there, which I'm sure is most of you, Mike didn't know who either of these guys were. <laughs> and given the fact that Sailor is Tasha Yar, who I'm sure he remembers from when he was younger, um, I mean, Chancellor Gowron he should recognise, but recognising that's a Tasha Yar actress who's on the side of the box. Yeah, when I saw the photograph that's on the side of the box, yes, I know who she is. I can't quite remember why the same actress is playing the Empress. Uh, it's complicated. And she's not Empress at the beginning. She's Tal Shiar. All right. But anyway, let's have a look at what you get in these. The retail price of the main box, we didn't say. 50 was pounds. 50 pounds. And these were 20? 20 pounds each, yep. So what you got, hopefully, in here is all the things you need. Do you want to go first? Are you? Okay. So you get five miniatures. Five character cards, 70 mission and support cards, one core mission card, and 21 tokens. So those 70 cards is what I'm going to build my deck from. Yes. And I wonder, so I'm wondering first, does it come with a starter deck? You know, does it come with the same kind of play this deck this way first? Yeah. Or are these as expansions? And um, it does also say in the rules, in the rule book, that they're likely to be producing other characters that you can add in and do swaps with this set, with these yeah. sets, um, you know. So, that, but that's obviously in the long term. Again, I like I like the style of it. You can see the miniatures through the clear plastic. The fact that they're different coloured pieces um, from one another. If because if you're not going to paint them as we haven't to the, to date. Um, 
the different the different colors are going to really help. I think that the they're in these Klingon ones are in pretty strong poses, so that's going to help make them be able to pick them out separately. So you've opened yours, Matt. What does it look like inside? Show them, show them the tray. So put that back in. So we've got the five characters and the deck of cards. Dodge of cards. Well, this is a, a nice green plastic and the names are on the bases again. And then underneath was the five character cards. Again, with the holes, it doesn't look like they come with additional pins. No. The two are the mission cards where you've got to choose your set. And a bonus token set, and I'm intrigued. For, for, well, that'll be like the bog assimilation tokens. These will be ones that are yeah. unique to the way this one plays. So, yeah, so we've got Intel, Borg Technology, and one I do like, a Romulan Bomb. A Romulan Bomb. Well, there you go. That's the Romulan Star Empire. Five miniatures, deck of cards. So you don't get in that. You don't get the proprietary dice. No, they are they are available. Separately. They are available separately. Okay, but you know if that helps keep the ba the base cost of the box down. Um, do you want to flip through the, the cards while yep. I uh, open Gowron? So I, I misunderstood this because I thought that this was the Dora sisters, um, but it's not. It is Gowron, who I think is the baby chancellor, as opposed to the. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a bit weedy. He's a bit weedy. So the four characters for you Star Trek fans out there. Well, you get Gowron, Krom, Kurak, and Lucara. And these are the crew of the Bortas, which was his command ship. And then your unique tokens are bread battlers. <laughs> so so you had, you've, you've had moments to look at this deck, Mike. Yep. Anything stand out already? Quality of the cards, right, we've got 30 mission cards. Right, of which you're going to choose 20. 20, and that, that gives us 40 support cards. But you're not going to want to put all 40 in. But you could. You could, yeah. Oh, I forgot to say, I don't know if you noticed, the two different decks form the, the symbol of the particular faction <laughs> when they're put together. I don't know whether you had noticed that. I, I hadn't. I, I, it, it's just a nice touch. Yeah, I when they like sat, like sat there on the table, yeah, that's a... That's the Romulan Star Empire, man. Yeah. I can tell you that the Klingon ones have got great names. They, they, they sound like exactly what Klingons should do. So in the mission deck, we've got Feast to Victory, Battle Fury, Blood Oath. Oh, we've got two of them. Code of Honor. Death is an experience best shared. <laughs> Glorious Battle, Honor, and you get the idea, right? <laughs> and in their support deck, I'd seen in here, what was it I'd seen that I particularly liked? You can get a Targ, or a Batleth, or some blood wine. You know, all the, the Klingon things, right? Yeah. They do the Klingon things. The Romulan one got flavour? Well, the first one is acceptable losses. When a friendly character is neutralised, discard up to three cards to score this card for 20 points. Nice. And the other, the other thing is that, uh, again, all of the support cards, they've actually got photographs or stills. Oh, they are photographs from the show? Yeah. Yeah. They are cut from the show. Um, yeah, they're not, they're not paintings or CGI, are they? These are, yeah. these are next gen and deep space known images. Oh, that's an interesting one. Uh, score this card at the end of the game if you have six or more conspiracy missions complete. <laughs> Conspiracy missions. Assassination. So this is a, uh, does it, uh, whether, um, unit cards, does it say, are they Tal Shiar? I assume they are. Does it say what they are? Oh, they, but uh, again, they're a, they're a ship crew. And we should point out that the card gives you their, their, their if they've got a, a ranged weapon um, and a close combat attack, but nearly all of them have got a secondary skill. Oh yeah, so Seal is a mastermind. Uh, when Sealer activates, look at the top two cards of your support deck. Put one back on the top and another at the bottom. Nice, so she can manipulate the deck a little bit. Shelby, whenever she attacked a, a Borg, she always got a bonus dice. Yeah, she's a Borg fighter. Yeah. That's, so. that's what she's about. Yeah. Gowron rolls an additional die in opposed skill rolls. 
So yeah, they, they, there's, there's flavour amongst them. Look, I think if you like Star Trek, you like the idea of doing away missions, you've played games like Warhammer on the Worlds and, and many others like it, where you you know you you assemble a deck to play with a set of characters, so you're going to try and play this game your way, and that may be quite different. The other guy, I think if you like that kind of style of game, I think you're going to like this. I think there's a there's enough in it for you to to replay it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to building my custom deck for the Federation they take against the board. And do you think you're going to play the Federation bog again with the custom deck, or do you want to get, jump well, straight that's, in that's the second, well, yeah. the Romulan <laughs> Star Empire? Yeah, we, we played two games, and they were both very close. We One, one win each. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I want to play the custom deck, because then I, I can formulate it. But, yes... Um, my Romulans against your Klingon or the or Viking Verita? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I've got to say, I, I would have preferred it if it was original Star Trek. Like um, shirt, shirtless Kirk. Yeah. It's a bit, you know, rip, bit, a bit of blood there, rip shirt, e elbowing, shat foo cards. So you elbow. Do I, do, I, do, I, do, I, do I have to bomb the guy in a red shirt then? <laughs> well, he'd be on my team, wouldn't he? It'd be Kirk, Spock, McCoy in a red shirt, surely. Because yeah. um, the entire senior command staff in original Star yeah. Trek would beam down to some potentially yeah. dangerous, not that important situation. Uh, which is a good thing about next gen, isn't it? Is that the captain tends to stay on the ship. He does. And he sends the boy to do his errands. Riker. Yeah. Um, so these are only two of the factions. There are quite a number of other factions. Does it, that, no, there is a, a Picarda's Federation. So we just we just looked it up because we had a little <laughs> bit of a disagreement there. This was what came out with the with the kind of first wave. Yeah, but that that next stage, it seems, of being able to blend things from multiple sets, is about to start because the next two boxes being released are. The Picard away team. Nice. And as you like. The Dora sisters. <laughs> so, and I think it, there's something mentioned in this rule book there here about blending teams. We didn't look at it because there weren't any teams that could blend at yeah. this point. Um, but that there would be multiple Klingon factions, that there would be multiple etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that that's an interesting thing to look at as well. So given the fact that these expansions they were 20 quid. Yeah. A 20 quid expansion. In 2023, when we're recording this, that is a cheap expansion, particularly when it comes with, you know, miniatures as well. Yes. What's interesting is there's no actual sort of rule sheet or anything with these. So you couldn't just pick up two of these and play the game. You're no, it clearly says the on the back. It clearly you, says... Yeah. You're going to have to get the base game. Yeah. Now, whether they will, like with World Attack or something else, whether they'll do other two-player starter sets in the future, difficult to know. But I think this is still very early days. Well, if I remember right, this product. was only... The one we, 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 the, we were playing one, and we left with the other one that was in the country. <laughs> <laughs> that, at the time, yeah. That, yeah. But that was that was back in the summer. Yeah. Um, so this, this stuff is all available at this point. Because yeah, uh, if we'd have made the video back, we couldn't have mentioned those other two factions. <laughs> well, because we wouldn't know. They're just on the pre-order sheet now, aren't they? Um, so that's something to look forward to. But yeah, I was I was surprised. Like with, with a little bit of time, and it's for fifty pound for a start set of a game. I think it's good. I think um, it's a good game to kind of have on the shelf. It, it, yeah, because the the setup is fifteen minutes. It's not. It's not no setup like some games, but it's fifteen minutes. Well, the, the other thing is the interesting. We have the scan mission area. Yeah, that means make the map. Choose core mission, which as it is. Yeah. Beam just, down. Just, yeah. <laughs> which you put your fingers on the table. Yeah. And um, shuffle decks. Yeah, and it's in the style of the Star Trek panels. Yeah. Uh, most of the artwork has been done like that. Look, um, we think it's all right. We're going to play some more of it. We are. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy our content. Like the video. Maybe leave us a comment. Thank you.